Yes, everyone. I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Lines TV. Welcome to another news daily video. I'm going to be focusing on four stories for today. I'm going to be talking about our stadium plan updates. I'll be talking about the future of Bakayoko. I'll be talking about Rabio links. And I'm also going to be talking about Skriniar links as well. But before I get into anything, smash that like button. Help me get more than 1,000 likes for today's video. Don't forget to press the bell notification button either. And in the card above will be links to suggested and recommended videos for you guys. So if you do want more Blue Lines TV, remember to click on the cards above. Now, starting with the first report for today, that's in regards to Rabio links. And this story is brought to you by Lequip. Now, Lequip is stating that every Premier League team seems to be after him. Man United, Liverpool, us, and Man City as well. And Lequip is stating that each club have held talks with Rabiot's agents and reps in hopes of a potential deal this summer. Now for us, it's not the first time we've been linked with Rabiot. The last time it happened was during the January window this season and he's clearly been a club on everyone's radar and it makes a lot of sense. Now this isn't the first time we've been linked with Rabiot. The first time this happened came during this season's January window and which is typical with these stories, there isn't too much context behind the scenes, but here's why I give my thoughts and opinions. Now, there's quite a few factors to think about, and the first one I think all of us are thinking about is, if we go for Rabio, what does this mean for Kovacic? Now, when it comes to Kovacic, there is some news in regards to what the future holds for him. Kovacic can be signed, irrespective of the penalty placed on us by FIFA, and that's simply because he was registered before FIFA imposed us with that penalty. And because of this, we have the option to either extend his loan or buy him on a permanent. But regardless, if we want Kova, we can have him. Now you might be thinking, well Nini, one thing you're always saying about Kova is the fact that he's worked under Sari, he has one year of tactical development under Sari, it makes a lot of sense to keep him. Why would he even talk about Rabio? Now, as I want to say, I'm giving my thoughts and opinions on the news. And second of all, it does make a lot of sense. Why else are all the big clubs interested in this player? I mean, he's about, what, 23, 24? A French international player as well. He's free. He's free. That's the most important thing. Meaning that whichever club signs him has an instant profit on their hands, irrespective of whether he does well or not. And knowing us, even if we can't get a transfer fee for the player, if hypothetically things did end up bad for him, you know with how we use the loan army, will most likely earn a lot of money just by generating loan fees for the player. And when you know that you can make so much money from the player potentially, naturally a lot of big clubs are going to entertain talks just to see where his head's at. Now, how do I personally feel about the player? For me, he's not upgrading the midfields, that's not happening. The only way I see this still making sense and fitting in with the grand scheme of things is if he's a replacement for a Barkley or a cover. And maybe because Rabio is available on a free, it might make it more interesting for Chelsea to consider not signing cover or letting Barkley go than trying to focus their efforts on trying to sign Rabio. But me personally, I'm not too excited by the player. Yeah, he's got some merits, of course. He's able to play in different roles in midfield. He provides us with that physicality and the height. The height we're desperately lacking. His height could help us up with set pieces and he'd be a good squad option to have. He could act as a backup for Kante, he can play deeper, he's also able to operate as a number eight, so he could be useful. But for me personally, I'm not too excited, but I'll leave it to you guys. Comment below, do you like the sound of Rabiot or do you not? Now moving on to the second story for today, that's in regards to Bakayoko. Now, Italian publications have been reporting that Baka might be a bit disillusioned at staying at Milan. I do have some information for you guys, exclusive of course, and thank you to my source for giving me this information, but I can tell you what's happening with Bakayoko currently. Now, this might not be neat for some of you guys because I have mentioned this in a stream already, but with Bakayoko in this situation, it depends on whether Milan make it into the Champions League or not. Now, the worry that Bakayoko and his camp have is the fact that can AC Milan afford to sign Bakayoko if they don't make Champions League football? Now, AC Milan have told Bakayoko that 
they want to keep him, they're even willing to sell Kessie, just so it means that they can sign back Yoko on a permanent, but so far, these are just informal talks, there's nothing concrete behind these talks, so naturally, Bakayoko is going to consider his options. Another thing with Baka is that he has grown a bit disillusioned with life in Italy. Of course, the racist abuse recently hasn't been good, so he is questioning whether he wants to remain in the country or not. But I've heard that he has been enjoying his time at AC Milan, and he's not opposed to signing for them permanently. One more thing I can tell you guys is that the only club to make an official offer for the player has been Lazio. This is a new thing. And the reason why I'm mentioning this is because the reports came out today that Inter Milan are interested in Bakayoko and his services, but it was kind of like a non-story. The reason why this became an article in the first place is because Baka's agent has good relationships with people at Inter Milan, and that's it. Reports came out that AC Milan were considering to let the player leave, but that's false I've heard. Now here's where I give my thoughts and opinions. Should we keep Bakayoko? We know that we're going to have a transfer ban regardless. We know that we do need backup for Kante. Baka has been at the club already. It would be easier for him to acclimatise to things and his confidence is back. Since he's joined AC Milan, he's playing with a lot more purpose now. And now, there could be a role for him at Chelsea where he plays in that ball winning midfield role. I like to think of the bigger picture and a part of me does feel like we know how the club operates. We need to sell players to generate a profit. It's how our revenue plan works and when you have a Bakayoko that still has a quite high market value, maybe it makes sense to sell him. Does Baka have the qualities where he can come into the team and upgrade the midfields? I don't think so. I don't mean to sound too cynical of course, but there's also a possibility that Baka remains on loan for another season and maybe then he's possibly reassessed for next season where we're definitely going to have the transfer window. But for me, Profiting off the player makes more sense and it's nice to know that quite a lot of clubs are still interested in Bakayoko. Now moving on to the third talking point, that's in regards to the stadium plan updates. And this story has been broken by a new civil engineer and they're reporting that Chelsea are entertaining the ideas of possibly moving the project away from Stamford Bridge and redeveloping elsewhere. The report states that Developers have been looking at possible alternatives to Stamford Bridge and the report also states that Chelsea are open-minded to the possibility of developing elsewhere and the reason for that is financial. If they developed elsewhere, the club could save about 500 million off stadium costs, which is incredible. However, because planning permission has been agreed to develop in the area, ideally, the club would prefer to develop on Stamford Bridge. Still, a move could be on the cards. Bringing down the cost is massive for the club. Originally, the price of the stadium was valued at about 500 million. That doubled due to costs. The report even stated that Chelsea held informal talks with designers and people working on the project, and they've let them know that if you're able to reduce the costs, we can start this project again and get things running. Now, just to give you guys some more additional valuable information, our planning permission does expire in January 2020, so work does need to take place, but on the upside, construction doesn't have to begin until the year January 2023, so a decision does need to be made soon. I'm going to link the article below in the description below because there's a lot more valuable information, especially if you want to try and understand how we got into this mess in the first place. Now, I only have brief thoughts and opinions on this. Of course, we do need to get this new stadium. It's going to be important for us in terms of we could really increase commercial activities as well and also it gives an opportunity for people to buy tickets and go to games however it would feel a bit weird to not travel to Stamford bridge if it did mean that the stadium has to be developed elsewhere it's going to affect some local business as well i would be quite sad to not have to visit Stamford bridge again but there's obviously still a lot more to this story things will be changing we know that there's an expiry date January 2020, so anything can happen. But moving on to the final story for today, that's in regards to Skriniar links. Now, these reports are coming out from Italy and they're stating that both us and Real Madrid have shown a strong interest in Skriniar. Now, his valuation is around 100 million and the reports are stating that 
both us and Real Madrid would be interested in activating the deal. The report states that Sarri is a big admirer of Skriniar and thinks he would be a valuable asset to the team. Now, the reports are making very bold claims that both clubs have already entertained talks for the player, but Inter have rejected them as they want him to sign a new deal. Now, I'm going to give my thoughts and opinions and they're going to be very different. Immediately, I'm going to pose the question, do we really need him? Consider how we play, consider how we use our defence. For me, he's more comfortable playing in low blocks. And when you consider how our defenders need to play, they have to be good on the ball. It's not only having the composure under pressure, it's about the choice of passes and how you progress the play because sorry ball starts from the back. And if you have just one player at the back who constantly picks the wrong passing option, constantly loses the ball or can't progress the play, that's really going to affect what we can do. Now, I've got big news for you guys. I can tell you that Sari is a massive fan of what Kurt Zuma has been doing this season. It makes a lot of sense. In a way, it's not really too much of a surprise because even logically, we can come to the conclusion that Zuma has all the attributes that Sari would really love in a defender. And he's the type of player that Sari can develop and improve and make even better. Now, for me, one area which Sari won't be too happy by is how weak we are from set pieces. But if you bring back someone like a Kurt Zuma, who's a master in the air, that immediately improves our aerial defending from set pieces exponentially. And who knows, ideally, Sari might entertain using a man marking style because he has that type of personnel to get that type of set piece marking working. Zuma is very good technically. He progresses the ball very well. At Everton, he's the guy that starts the attacks from deep and he's been playing on the left-hand side of the defence. He can use his left foot and he has been playing on the left-hand side of Everton's defence. When we already have this type of profile of defender for free, it makes no sense to entertain talks with defenders. And for me personally, unless a defender is coming back from our loan army, I'm not really interested. I think it's the last area in which we need improvement in. As I keep stressing, our defending starts from the top. We're not a low block defensive team anymore. So if you want to see that defensive improvement, the press needs to be better. But you guys comment below. Are you happy about seeing Kurt Zuma returning for next season? I'm going to keep things moving. Expect me to release the pre-match live stream later on today. Don't miss out on that. Of course, I will be releasing the match review for our game tonight. So don't miss that as well. I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Lines TV. Signing out.